Welcome viewers to E Patasala, a course for the PG students of architecture. So, we were discussing about various aspects of projections and we stopped with the conical projection. So, what kind of projections, where should we use? I just given a brief introduction to that. So, let us see what are the types of projections which are normally using your say conic cones rather. So, that is the first one is your equal area projection, Albers and Lambert, two of the projections which are being used. Then we have the conformal projection again Lambert in nature. So, conical projection surface one is your plane where in which you just put it inside and the second conical projection you can see there will be slight overlap or it is projecting outside. Lambert conformal conical projection one of the very vital one which is important where your parallels are all arcs of concentric circles. So, all the parallels or your latitudes will be arcs of concentric circles. Meridians are straight and con converge on one point because it is cone is not it, cone is as you just know because it is in this fashion because being a cone obviously every meridian will be merging at the top. In the cylinder case it is something like this flat, but in the case of a cone being conical in nature all the meridians will merge at one particular point that is a major drawback here. Then the parallel spacing that is your latitude spacing is set to so, it is set so that north to the south uh, scale are equal around at any point. There will not be any variation with respect to the scale. There will not be any failure of scale factor because that is very important thing in your mapping part. And uh, very importantly parallels and the meridians they cross at right angles it to one another and usually done as a second surface interface rather. This is used for say conformal mapping in mid latitudes of maps of great east east extent. Because when you try to understand or when you try to work with that, these cones I told you it will be normally with respect to your mid latitudes and it all depends on to the value or the standard parallel what you select while preparing the map part. When you have a good extent, great extent of east west extent, if any map is there, if you want to map then you go for conical map. So, many cases you find that not entire part of it, most of the places will have water, but if you want to map the land part of it which is extending from east to west thoroughly and more, then you can use your say this particular projection Lambert conformal conical projection. So, this is how it will be there. You can see here and as you know that this will be the part your the African country and the American countries and this is your pole part of it and you can see how the Lambert conformal conical projection appears as a map. You see another one other part of it the same area you can find that how the American countries are shown. Albers equal area conical projection. So, in the previous case it was different now it is area equal area that means the area should not be affected in any part of the map. So, that is a projection part of it how do you use that or what is that. Again in this case parallels are concentric arcs of circles, all the parallels are considered to be your concentric circle of circles rather. Meridians are straight lines drawn from center of the each arc, so there will not be any error as per that. And the parallel spacing is also adjusted to offset the scale changes that occur between the meridians. So, they will try to adjust the parallels in such a way there will not be any effect of your meridians getting affected usually drawn on the secant. So, that is one aspect between standard parallels east west scale is too small. So, that the north west scale is increased to offset that is the process they uh, adopt. Whereas, outside standard parallels east west is too large. So, that the north west scale is decreased to compensate in one case it is uh, offset other case it is compensated. And this is the output what we get in the form of your albus con conic projection this is how it is being projected and this is your equal area conical projection. And uh, if you observe very carefully you can find that at most of places in this area if, if I consider this topic of cancer as my standard parallel I will find that the area is relatively same between the meridians the area will be same you can see here. So, that is the excellent part of this one equal area conical projection. So, if you try to compare this equal area of Albers and Lambert you will find this is how it will be. So, Lambert conformal conical projection areas are affected here area is right hand probably. So, Lambert conformal this is Albers equal area conical projection. Modified conic projections some of them are one of the important aspect or the projection which is being used in India is polyconic projection. Polyconic 
what they, they do is they place multiple cones over pole that is considering for example, this the brown one starts with dark brown, light brown and the lightest brown. As I told you earlier, these will decide the quality of your projection parallels or the standard parallel which I am going to consider. So, depending upon which parallel is actually touching this cone, so that is important. So, this brown one, this one, for this one, this is the one and for this one, this is the one. So, some of them you can see here these parallels are touching the sides of the cone. So, that is a fa aspect. So, they try to place multiple cones over the pole, so that we will be considering lot of lot of area and each of the cones will be representing a small area of the globe. So, that is very important. And you see that beauty is that every parallel what you consider is a standard parallel, because I have multiple cones is not it. So, instead of using one cone and any one single parallel I use uh, them in such a way. And the another aspect is that these parallels intersect the central median at true spacing. So, that is the best part of it. So, these parallels you know you know the central median, this will be the central meridian or the longitude part of it and the parallels intersect at true spacing, there will not be any distortion of the spacing. But uh, what we do is that what, what we lose or what is the ma main drawback is that we may have to compromise in this projection small distortion near the central meridian, only at the central meridian it will be affected whereas in the surrounding area there will not be any error. You see the polyconic projection, because you are using different cones you will have different concentric circles how it is shown here you see. So, this is your African country in India as I told you we in India use only polyconic projection, there will be a slight variation, but there will not be any much of uh, effect at all. So, the central meridian part only will get affected a little otherwise there will not be any error. Okay, this is the one simple method of putting it a polyconic projection, various countries are shown here. Azimuthal projection where we use the planar projection surface, the planar surface will be like this and the globe will be like this. So, here at this particular point it will be tangent or it will be exactly touching that. What happens uh, or when you, what is that I, what is that I uh, acquire by looking from one direction with respect to the oppo exactly opposite direction to where the surface is. That is when I am having this uh, planar surface here, I have the globe here and this will be the point of your viewing. So, what will happen? So, let us see the details uh, how it is done. There are so many things, one is your equal area where the area will not be affected, conformal stereographic projection, equidistance where the distance will be the same, which is your azimuthal or equidistant method, nomonic projection which will compromise, but all straight lines are great circles. So, that is what is your azimuthal projection. So, this is your planar projection, you see here, I think you can visualize is not it. So, this is the globe and this is the surface, the planar surface which is touching at the pole part of it. Obviously, when I just try to project the objects, you can see the light source here, the light source when it is falling through this and this will be the output. So, this will be the pole and this is all the various aspects or various uh, um, land surfaces and water surface which is being projected, planar surface projection. In azimuthal projection, what exactly is the criteria? The projection to the plane and where you find is that all aspects normal transverse and oblique all the three of them are considered normal then transverse and the oblique direction. And the light source can be either of the three, so that is the best part it can be nomonic, it can be stereoscopic or geographic or orthographic that is it can be at the center, it could be at the exactly opposite point of the um, globe or it could be from infinity that is a biggest advantage. Because the globe is I told you know from this is your planar surface, this is the globe part of it. I am going to send the light source from here somewhere, I can start from anywhere infinity or exactly at the point of your uh, um, opposite point uh, to the globe from here or the center of the globe. So, this is the advantage in the case of your say azimuthal projection, the light source can be either nomonic, stereographic or orthographic in nature. Some of the characteristics are which are very common irrespective of what kind of light source we are going to use is that any point or circle great circle passing through the point of tangency or straight lines radiating from that particular point. So, that is the best part. So, because uh, this is the point of your contact tangential surface from here 
all the circles passing through this point of tangency are straight lines. So, there will not be any distortion, all of them will be straight in nature. And very importantly, they also have a correct compass direction, that is the direction, the compass direction will be exactly vertical, there will not be any error in that. And the points which are equally distant from this point at the center of the projection on the globe are equal distance on the center of the map. So, that is another aspect of your azimuthal projection. So, this is what is your azimuthal projection, you can see here how it is done. It is something like a circular object, plan, this uh, planar surface is like this. This is your Lambert azimuthal equal area projection. So, this is your azimuthal in general projection, this is your devised by or Lambert who is used azimuthal and equal area, the area will be equal throughout. There are other projections and they do not belong to a specific family, they normally compromise on say type of uh, distortion that is one or two or sometimes uh, two or three also not always three, two, two of the aspects are either shape or size or two of the aspects are being compromised. But uh, they are all specific to different countries and they are very particularly developed by individuals, but still they are all equally important. Van der Gritten, Robinson, one of the most popular uh, method, the one who has actually written a uh, lot of books on cartography, Molweed, Sinusoidal and Goodsey, Goodes, uh, Homosline and then Bracemeister and Fuller. These are the some of the people who have developed uh, different projections for different countries and purposes. It is van der Gritten, you can see here, it is see they do not follow any specific shape or structure, neither cylindrical nor conical. So, they just follow some method and see that uh, the errors are not to, or in fact uh, they try to take care such the errors are distributed throughout rather than it is concentrated in one particular place, there will not be any accumulated errors. This is your van der Gritten and they see how the earth is there. So, it is almost like a globe is not it. So, you can see that uh, as you see the globe the map is also shown in that fashion. The meridians are there, parallels are there, so you see the uh, equator and the other parallels and also you find that they are all just like similar to your same your globe, it appears like a globe rather. Robinson projection as I told you very very popular one and it is also called as a compromise projection because they compromise on various aspects, but of course a very popular one. This is your Robinson projection. It is not uh, your uh, transverse mercator where in which we consider it going to be a rectangle, it is not true. It is again uh, not exactly as similar to your vander where it is more like a globe like, this is more like a, a kind of a extended globe, something uh, as though we are trying to pull it from the center, something like this, not sort of spherical in nature, so ellipsoid in nature, elliptical in nature with the longer and the shorter axis and you find this is what is your uh, line. And we also use the data line somewhere here, the world international data line will be there, from there they try to project the data. This is Molweed equivalent projection, again in this context areas will be equivalent, there will not be near, but other distortions will be there and this is a typical ellipsoid, but not much of, so here it will be slightly different because there is no top, so you consider here entire thing is considered as a, that is he has considered the earth as a typical ellipse, then obviously it is not possible I told you, the very beginning earth is not a any it does not take any specific shape. Of course, we know that uh, the uh, north axis, north poles, north to south pole that particular pole is slightly shorter than your say your uh, equatorial poles, but the equator, equator because the there is always that is what is called the earth bulge, you must have heard about the bulge of the earth, slight variation will be there. So, that they have considered into, they taken into consideration and this Molweed has developed a projection which will be represented like this. Sinusoidal considering as a sinus curve. So, it is neither your ellipse, it is more of a sinusoidal curve. So, this is how it will be. You see the shape itself is different, where in which you can find that the areas are very good at the central part of it, near the equator or up to the topic of Cancer and Capricorn, whereas when you just move away from the poles it will be affected. But here the interesting part is that in the southern hemisphere there is not much of land, as all of you know that most of the land is present only in the northern hemisphere. But here this is what, here the effect will be more, but up to this particular range you can see it is almost equal, up to a part of your India of course almost uh, India, your uh, African of course America to some extent is there or this will get affected, okay, South America is working, North America will uh, get affected a little, 
but this is one of the uh, good uh, projection system sinusoidal equal area projection they take into consideration the area. Other projection goods homolysin projection where is this you find what is that he has done you can see here you see the shape you know it is not getting see this is 100 percent circle but it will get it is okay near the equator. But when you go away from this you see the shape is getting affected you can see I think you can observe it very carefully this is the point which is perfect circle relate slightly distorted and this is really and this is you highly distorted. So, this is how this affects this is what is your method in that it is again equal area, but the shape will be slightly distorted. Yeah, Bremester is another projection where again he is also to consider the entire area as a elliptical object and then uh, see that how it is yeah, of course, not my very popular, but still one of the projections which are there. Fuller projection a person who has never taken into consideration any shape as I was telling you non geometric shape. So, considering uh, the earth as independent boxes or features and then putting them together a uh, something like uh, uh, a puzzle like you can see that how it is in uh, various puzzles are just uh, join the puzzle together to form a, a projection system. But this is uh, very effective in the case of say small small areas, but you know, just take into consideration the whole earth definitely it will not be very accurate. Then how do you choose your projection very important is not it you will have to decide how I choose my projection and what is the criteria I will have to follow what should I do to decide what type of projection I am going to use in my map. Again here there is a slight variation or difference you should not get confused with the projections which are already available in the GIS software from projections what has to be decided for developing a map with respect to say your cartography. So, let us see that what is that you do is that normally look at the various maps where many of the people who are already developed or must have made maps you just look at that maps which where you are interested and then decide what is that. And you should remember that all the state plan which follows here or the almost all the states in the United States follows a common projection as I have told you right from the beginning conical projection or UTM variance because uh, conical because they are on the mid latitudes they will be using it very effectively and UTM which is very very vague um, vogue one and very pur purposeful one. So, they use that in the United States whereas in India we use the polyconic projection as I told you right from the beginning this is the best choice you can use because it does not exceed that area does not exceed 6 degrees that is between each and every longitude the area is 6 degrees only. So, it will not be so about 1730 meters into 6 that is almost your uh, um, 10,000 uh, this one will be the total distance. So, there will not be much of varia, variation with respect to the distance. Yes, as I told you UTM projection is one of the most popular. So, I thought I could take little more extra effort and then giving you some more details about your UTM projection. Otherwise called as your universal transverse mercator projection one of the popular projections. Uh, this uh, on a global map the entire earth is divided into n number of zones. Any zone when you are working with you have to say this is the particular zone this is the way where I am going it will ask you which zone you are falling into. So, when you are classifying the data when you are giving the projection you will have to decide which zone you belong to every country in fact will have two zones India has got two zones south and north. So, similarly most of the countries depending upon the size of the country will have n number of zones. So, you can choose whichever zone you are interested in and then decide that. So, the entire thing is there all the lines are straight in nature. So, a lot of compromise has taken place and then they have straightened it such that there will not be any error with respect to both distance as far as your area aspect. It is a kind of a projection where you just calculate to prepare a flat map on the round earth. So, that is all calculated that is what I told you this is more of your say mathematical approach. And they are numbered from east to west and letter not south you can I think you can see here they are numbered from east to west and letter not south you can see this is how the lettering is taken place and now you can choose for example, India you can see here P. So, which part again you say India Q and P and even R is there a little yes. So, you say that P in fact in Tamil Nadu it is more of north so in N so P is there Q is there S R. So, this is the numbering your uh, letters and the numbers are given here. So, when you want to choose any specific one for example, the central India is a Q followed by this 42, 43, 44 dep depending on whichever part of your India you are going to look at. So, that will be there. So, your Q 44 
n p so so depending upon that you choose that particular area and each zone as i already told you is equivalent to 6 degrees of longitude wide so that will be the width of that because you know pretty well that longitude is also at the equator the, the distance width between two of the longitudes will be the same but when you go closer and closer towards your uh, um, poles it will vary because uh, as I told you it will be like something like this. So, at the, at the center it will be fine whereas towards the uh, uh, poles it will vary and all the measurements which is made in UTM is all your meters in nature and uh, they follow the conformal projection and preserve the shape of the object. Of course, the surface will be cylindrical that is what is the best part I told you. So, you use the cylinder conformal when you split it open you open like this. So, that is the best part of it here and you have two standard meridians not one standard meridian two standard meridians on either side for the earth surface and I told you zones are all 6 degrees apart. So, this is the way in which your UTM projection system or this will appear and from here it is all the values are given every 6 degrees of course, the numbering may be different here it is only to convenience the image 0, 12, 24, 36 in between you have lines is not it. So, that is the best part of course, in this context they do not use this this will be 8 degrees and the longitude part only latitude part you have 8, 16, 24 is that the degree variation. This is one part of it. There is another part of it is called as the raster analysis. Most of the study, most of the people, they use raster analysis for various purposes. Before going to that, let me make clear difference between vector and raster. You must have already learned a little about in your GIS. Here, vector data and raster data plays an important role. What kind of that we are going to use and what is that whether you are going to be vector data based study or approach or your analysis or raster data. Vector data it consists of say features. What we call it as feature is nothing but everything and anything on the earth surface we call it as a feature. In the sense an object which is there on the earth surface if it has to be represented on a map or a sheet of paper it can be represented only in the form of say point, line and area. There is no other method of representing that. Okay. Let me talk about that and just give you some idea about that. For example, when you talk about the point data, geometrically speaking, point has neither area nor length. Line has got length but does not have area, but area has got area as well as your length or perimeter, whatever is the circumference or all those things are there. So, that is a major difference between the three. But when you are representing graphically, a point is one which again I told you can be your latitude or longitude if it is going to be geography coordinate system, it could be your easting and northing if it is going to be UTM coordinate system and the projection could be depending upon the country. Coming back to the point, any kind of if you want if, you, if one is interested in locating himself on the earth surface, point plays an important role. All your smartphones or GPS or any of the equipment on your monitor uses this analogy. A point is that intersection of your latitude longitude or your easting or northing that is one part. When you talk about a line, a line will consist of n number of points. A line is not formed as a line straight line like how you draw on a sheet of paper. Even if you want to have a line, you need a minimum of obviously two points. More than two points depending upon the shape of the line, is it a straight line or a curved line or a non-regular line? you will find n number of points. So, line is comprised of n number of points. Area, an interesting aspect of area is that it starts from point one point and ends up at the same point. That is the point of origin and the point of destination are the same. Whereas, in the case of a line, point of origin and destination may be different or is rather different. Even if it comes very close, if it does not touch each other, it will be just a line. Only when the point of origin and the point of destination touch each other, it becomes a close line. A close line can never become be a say your area, is not it? It is a close line more of a circle. So, to convert it, we will have to convert the space which is enclosed by this circular object as an area. But again here, area is also nothing but your say culmination or joining of multiple various points. Only difference is that in the case of line, 
it does not merge with each other whereas it merges with each other in the case of your area. So, that is your vector data. Hence, any object on the earth surface anything you want to represent on the sheet of paper it is done only by the feature we call it as feature in GIS terms that line feature, point feature, area feature. But please bear in mind there is no object on the earth surface there is no object on the earth surface which is a point. Even if I am going to prick a point on a sheet of paper it, it is occupying a space obviously but still for all mathematical purpose we say point has neither area nor length similarly your line does not have area but all the objects are supposed to be area in nature. For example, even if we take a simple electrical pole may be 3 inches, 2 inches but still it occupies. But when I want to represent an electrical pole, I will be representing the pole as a point data on a map. So, depending upon that, so that is the reason vector data though it is accurate in nature, it has got its own constraints. The same aspect when I am representing raster data that is your raster image or raster data, you have the advantage of say the entire thing is divided into n number of cells. Raster is nothing but containing matrix of cells, rows and columns. It occupies only area. There is no point, there is no line. Even if you are going to prick a particular point in a raster cell, it is a cell. As I told you in example of your say electrical pole or even a 1 millimeter diameter, sorry 1 millimeter say uh, anything it could be a simple a rope or anything like that, a simple uh, electrical wire, whatever is that. If it is going to be even if it is 0 0.1 millimeter, it occupies an area. Hence, uh, in the case of raster, it will be more accurate, but the only difference is that major, I mean, major drawback rather is that in the case of raster, it is not possible for one to demarcate an object accurately because it does not follow any because when I just zoom a raster image what will become it will become pixelated is not it. So, you cannot draw in, join them when you join them it will become of non regular shape it will never be a smooth surface, but of course that is not let us not go into those details. So, let us know, understand that each of them whether it is going to be a rector or raster. So, all the things what we have learned is about your we were, I was talking about a point data somewhere taking a projection center away from all these things everything is on mostly of vector based. If it is raster in nature what kind of error what is that is possible is that uh, say when you try to look into that raster data the cell size changes with latitude as you all know that pretty well from the center of the earth if you go away from this as you know that the cell size also changes. For example, 1 minute of arc I told you 6 minutes is not it 1800 meters we call it as or exactly 1854 meters by 1700 meters in Florida the same cell when you are moving away 1854 there is not much of error in variation in your longitude, but when you go away from the center it is 1200 meters. You just imagine the variation in the area when it is near Montana. Cell value changes from one place to another place hence pricking or taking a particular point as the point for your projection it will become little difficult. So, what is that we try to do is that we just try to compromise on that we just take small small areas and then try to work on that. In fact, uh, when you are using large projects even district wise process projects we do not try to integrate the data raster directly because that will be that will result in lot of errors. So, we try to integrate the data part by part so that there will not be much of errors each of them will be geo referenced properly putting them together making them to see that there will not be any error with respect to the positional accuracy of the data and then we try to work on that. So, hence it is very very difficult for one to match the cells one to one in two different projections it can never be same same. So, what we normally do is that all the satellite data whatever you acquire what do you do is that they resample the data it could be either cubic convolution method or your nearest neighborhood method for categorizing the data it is very very important. Sometimes people also use maximum likelihood but this method resampling method is very important resampling of the satellite data is done and then it is only only then it is passed on to the user. So, that is what is the beauty of that. So, very important for one to know is that in the case of your area with respect to raster it will be different when compared to uh, from from equal to the poles when compared to the other types of data. If you look at it uh, facilities which are normally available in any GIS software is that uh, arc toolbox will help you. 
you will have the projection system it will indicate the existing projection system it will give an option for your changing from one position to another projection that is one part ok. So, that can be done you can define a projection of that to your new projection from one projection to another projection. So, you can display and then make calculation that is where RGIS. Most of the software I will just show you is that in GIS you can see here everything if it is going to be geography coordinate system you see latitude longitude n number of varieties are there latitude longitude it could be projections depending upon the version of that it also could be non earth and it will give an option for you to say projections of the world projections of hemisphere azimuthable systems american polyconic systems regional mercator regional conformal region so whatever i told you all these facilities will be normally available you can choose any one of them which is continuing like this australian map grid australian map grid uh, AGD, it is 86, 84, map grid of Australia, Australian state grids and so on and so forth. You have so many systems are there, Brazilian polyconic and amongst that. So, of these varieties, in fact, many are there, I have just shown you a few of them. If I take latitude longitude, then within the latitude longitude, you have a host of them. For each and every country, you will have a different latitude longitude system. Indian system for Bangladesh, India and Nepal, Indian system for Thailand and Vietnam, because these two countries use the Indian lac lock polyconic system. So, that is how this is there. So, you choose one amongst them and then use there will be very very marginal difference between the area, but still when you are trying to make calculation it should be very very accurate is not it you cannot uh, take it for granted ok let me compromise in the area that will lead to lot of co conflicts. So, everybody will have their own system and then so what they try to do is they just try to concentrate on a specific area for India means India will have a separate system. It is not that we cannot uh, consider the for any other uh, um, projection system, but still to have an accuracy with respect to India will you because whether it is going to be 1000 square kilometers or 919 square kilometers or 1001 square kilometers, it is not a concern for a neighboring country. They have their own and we have our own. We are bothered about our area and you know what is the total area of India and then we will try to protect our lands from enemies. So, we choose or we select uh, that particular uh, latitude longitude system according to the requirement. Again I told you depending upon uh, what is that we are going to use which are uh, the latitude longitude in that uh, polyconic systems we call it as a polyconic projection we have two of them India Everest and India WGS 84. This uh, WGS 84 I think I told you in the very beginning is nothing but your um, this uh, geodetic world geodetic system. And this was done as late as your 84. Unfortunately, till date it has not been revised because people are now working on that. This datum, I think I told you about what is datum is, reference system. This datum of WGC 84 is vital and every individual uses that. Of course, in our context, if it is going to be, in fact, that is what is the a point I thought I should share with you. In our context, if you are going to work with, say, government projects, they will insist on Everest. If you are going to work for anything in general, most of the people use only WGS 84. See, it is all just a combination of India, lat long, polyconic. In that, again, the reference system is your category India, Everest, or WGS 84. That is the datum we use as a reference. Again, when you go inside, you will get some more details and you can work on that accordingly. So, this is all about your say all the aspects of cartography and projection system. So, with this uh, we just conclude to the episodes on cartography and map projections in GIS how it is been used or effectively to create a map because a good map will result in good results. Thank you.